Well, mailbag time, and I've got a pretty big box here. This is a piece of test gear. That'd be the last thing you open. But I've got lots of other things here to look at as well, so we'll check these out, then we'll get to this. I think there's some interesting things in here. Stick around. And as always, there'll be links down below for things I can give you links for, so make sure you check those out. What is this? It's got 5 watt 10 dB DC to 4 gigahertz on the front. So this is a in attenuator. So in type. So a 10 dB attenuator. I got this because of my spectrum analyzer, the Siglant SSA 3021X Plus, which I picked up relatively recently. I didn't have any in type attenuators and I wanted to put some in type attenuators on the front panel just to at least have something. Just as a precaution, because you don't want to overload the front end of a spectrum analyzer. Not easy thing to fix. And the other thing that was in the packet is also this thing here, a sort of 50 ohm terminator. So the question is, is it really 50 ohm or is it 51? Because a lot of times you get these things and they're 51 ohms, not 50. Let's measure it. Is it 51 or 50? Yep, 51 ohms, not 50. So if you're trying to use these things on something like a VNA, I mean, if you're just doing a load, it probably doesn't matter too much. But if you're on something like a VNA and you're trying to use this for calibration, it's out by a little bit. It'd be out by 2%. May I make matter to you? But trying to find actual 50 ohm load, not so easy, because it always comes as 51 for some reason. All right, this is a square. So I did show a previous one, which is sitting over here still, the back of the desk. Like these little mini squares, like this. And I've got another one sitting here too. Like that. Well, I've got those in the previous mail bag. I haven't put them away yet. But this is a different type. So there's the 45 on it as well. And you can mount it in there like so. Bolt those together. Those are steel, this is aluminium. Doesn't really matter, I don't know, probably not, but this has got you know the 45 degree on it as well. So it's internal, external square, and obviously vertical square as well at the same time. So if you need to get a corner done, maybe you could do it like that. Maybe, I don't know. Also I've got to assemble it. Two screws. It's all assembled. These are countersunk screws, it all lines up quite nicely. I did basically put it on the bench like this and made sure it's sitting flat so this join is flush when I did the screws up, so it's definitely sitting at the right angles and stuff. Because if you had anything there, it could actually rock a little bit or something like that and actually be wrong. It could be you know slightly that way or slightly the other way. I will double check that before I actually go to use it, but I think that's fine. They do love using their cling film on everything, don't they? Like, even like, on the inside bit's cling filled. So what we have here is more than one rod. It's a thin rod. I got this because I actually lost my cleaning rod for my desoldering gun. So sometimes you need to like, plunge through the soldering iron tip to clean out the vacuum airway because it will clog sometimes. You need to clean those out and run a rod through them if once in a while just to unclog them. You don't have to do it very often. It depends on your desoldering technique I suppose. Anyway, I lost the rods, and I saw, oh, I was looking around for some rods, and I found these little things here, which are just basically all rods. I think they're like 0.4mm or something like that. I thought they might be useful as spares. I did actually end up finding the correct ones and buying those, but I already had these in my cart, so I just left them on there instead of taking them back off, because I thought well, these will probably do in a pinch. And here is the actual proper one, this is the one I actually lost. This one I came with, it's also got this little slightly rough section on the end here. Probably can't see it on camera, but it's very slightly rough there. I actually lost this, and what happened is when I vacuumed my desk one day, I accidentally sucked it up. And when I went to empty out the vacuum cleaner, I found it again. <laughs> so that was good. So these are just some um, N type coaxial cables. Uh, I think they're like one and a half meters. There you go, a few different lengths there. So it's probably, what's that, 50, 30 maybe? I don't know. Maybe one meter, maybe one and a half meters, a few different lengths of those. I didn't have many N-type cables, and I mean I did have some, but not many. I thought I'd get some more, and these are supposed to be better quality coaxes, I suppose. I don't know if they really are or not. Anyway, now I've got some, so when I need to hook up to my new special analyzer for anything, I've got a selection of cables. The more of those things you have, the better, really. You never quite know what you're going to need. I've still got loads of things to look at yet. I'm only about halfway. So for some reason I went through a little phase of buying squares and 
things. <laughs> so this is another one. These are relatively inexpensive on AliExpress anyway. How good the quality is, oh, I really don't know. It's one of these things you just have to try out. I mean this has got 45 degree, 90 degree square on the end. It's got a level here. We've got this adjustable angle one here which also got a level on it. We've got this one. So it's really configurable. And this one here they should do tipping angles. But it's got a little readout on here as well for the angle. So it means you could probably get an actual angle reading off something which is mounted, you know, maybe a shelf or something which is a bit wonky. My desk is certainly slightly wonky, but I could get an angle off that using the level in here and that, maybe I could do that. So look, so I'm do us can I do that. So my desk is very really slightly wonky, I know it is leading very really slightly one way. It says it's about two degrees. I believe that. Let's try to protect it. It's nice. It's a lens. Now this is supposed to be a macro lens which will fit on my Unity thermal camera. Let's try it out. So there's a the thermal camera. It's the UCI 260B, which I got given to review by Vanguard a while ago. Really like this camera, it works really well. And this is the macro lens assembly, so it does drop into there like that. The only thing I'm not liking is the fact that it's actually not holding on the sides. These aren't actually grabbing the sides. If I turn this up this way, it just falls off. So that is not ideal, is it? you think it would be gripping, but otherwise it fits. I mean, this is just a 3D printed assembly, right? Someone's just 3D printed these, and they've got these macro lenses now. I did actually buy another lens before, like this is the previous mailbag. Should a macro lens here in the previous mailbag, so this is obviously what they're doing is getting these things and just 3D printing a cover for it now. This is a big deal, I could probably just warm this up a bit, a bit of hot air. And if I look down it, I can actually see it's slightly bowed. Just warm that up very slightly, I'm sure I can get it to pinch and actually hold onto the sides. So for the time being, let's just try it out and let's see what actually happens with it. Power this up. So here's my thermal camera. Now normally these have a focal distance of about 30 centimeters or so, so you can see my hand in the background there, and that's actually focused. But as I get closer, it actually blurs. Okay, you can't see much detail up close. So I put this on here. We'll do the same again. Now, now at distance I'm blurred, and as I get closer, it comes into focus. You can see the detail on my ring there. And obviously, I got too close, it goes blurry again. But about there, that's kind of in focus. I put it back out again. Oh, yeah, my fingers like that so you can see a bit better. So yeah, that's probably estimate that distance, shall we? About there. It's probably about six, seven centimeters. Probably about four to five. It's a very narrow focal range. But it does work. If you need to get close to something, maybe it'll be good for you. So I just heated these up very slightly just here and here and folded them around to curve them inwards. And that now holds on just fine. It's a decent fit now. Now very slight hooking on these. So that should be right now. Minor manufacturing mistake. Oh you minor. So I've still got a few packages to go. Yeah, you've got this one, we've got this one, we've got the DigiKey one, then we've got a massive box which has got the test gear in it. Now I've already kind of torn it slightly there. Let's get it started. So these are review items actually. Yep, these are some review items from Banggood. Banggood sent this to me at no cost for review, so we'll do some reviews on these. I'll have a quick look at them now just to see what I've actually got, and then you know what reviews to look out for. So here we have a insulation resistance tester. This can do up to 2,500 volts apparently. Yeah, anyway, we'll do a review on this. I do actually have an insulation resistance tester. It's quite old and it's an analogue one. It works fine, I've been using it, obviously, but I I'll just try something a bit more modern now. It's an anning, so it's relatively inexpensive. And then we've got this O1 thing here too. Let's find out what this is. Of course, it's a digital multimeter, but let's have a close look. It's one of these. How small that is. Mains power, it's got USB in the back. 55,000 count, so four and a half digit. As I would always do with my test gear reviews, like multimeter reviews, I'm putting this thing through its paces on my calibrators and my references, so I'll be able to check the accuracy on like DC volts and stuff like that, and current measurements and, and what have you. So we can see how accurate this thing actually is. Find out how good these are. Watch out for that review. Also, before I forget, click subscribe right now. 
You can blame Julian Elet on that. It's his fault. Elet, I let him. Oh, so this is a bit of a conspiracy theorist kind of thing. <laughs> it's supposed to be a RF shielding fabric. Now I didn't get this because I'm paranoid. I got this because I want to stop EMI. Um, and it's supposed to be copper. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's got metal in it. So a copper weave. You can get this in different sizes. So it's supposed to help block EMI. So I think if I have this across like a fan entry or something like that, most strips airflow too much, I really don't know. No, well, maybe not, I'm gonna blow straight through that. Maybe I put this across a fan and help stop EMI escaping out of a fan inlet or a cooling vent or something like that. Might be good for that. Thought I'd ever play with that, because now I can actually do testing. It'd be worth a look. We've got a credit card protector as well, which is just a metal pouch, basically. This is what I mainly got it for. This was obviously just thrown in by RFID blocking. Yeah. No, that's actually a good idea sometimes. This is what I wanted was this copper mesh fabric to see if I can use that to help reduce EMI on certain things I'm doing testing, maybe I can wrap it in it or something like that. I don't know. Alright, got a digi-key box. So I think I know what's in here already because, you know, obviously I ordered it. What I do like about digi-key is you've got this paper packaging. It's recyclable. Brilliant. So I realised recently that I had a bit of a lack of voltage regulators, of a certain type anyway. So we've got a 7908 CV, 7812, 7809, LM337, that's the negative adjustable regulator, 7805, so those aren't familiar with the 78 codes or 79 codes. The last two digits is the voltage, right? So 7.5 is a 5 volt regulator, 7.812 is a 12 volt regulator, positive regulators. A 7.905 is a negative 5 volt regulator, etc. Right? For those who aren't familiar with it, most people are, but not everyone is. Um, LM317 is a positive adjustable regulator. A 7.815 is a 15 volt regulator. Just stocking up on things I needed. I've already got quite a few regulators in stock, but I didn't have the ones I needed. I was doing a project the other day, I was trying to do a live stream. And I wanted to replace a battery pack and a piece of test gear. The original one's long gone. But I was going to modify it. And I didn't actually have the regulator I needed. I need, I need a 7909. And those have actually been hard to find. I have found some since. I've got a 7908, which is close enough. But a 7909 would have done a job. I, mean, I could have actually done a 7908 with a diode in series with the negative leg. And that will give a offset. But uh, yeah. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing, but I've also got the LM337, which is a negative adjustable regulator. You can use this the same way, and you can set the voltage wherever you want, for any reason. But uh, yeah, that's what those are. Right, now we've got a big box. I think I might as well clean my desk off first. We'll see how we go. Right, let's get to this thing. Well, package is excellent. I always stipulate on bits of test gear, lots of thick padding right around it, and they've done exactly that. They've done exactly the right thing. Heaps of padding, looks good. Have an IC cable, might be good for parts, I suppose. Oh, don't forget my merch is also available if you're interested in merch. You can buy this shirt. Oh, that's like it. Okay, where's the key fleet? I have no idea if it works. It's got the card in there, which is excellent. That's quite an important factor. I did specifically mention to the seller. Make sure it's got the card in it for the connections. Just sitting right here. Like this. It's got the card, so brilliant. That is important because if that wasn't there, that could be a bit more complicated trying to deal with it. Anyway, that's there, so great. Voltage selection is internal. The company says 105 volts, or 110 volts nominal, I suppose. So that'll need changing over. So you go, it's the Keyfleet 228A voltage or current source. And as you can see, it's got like a four quadrant designation just here which is nice and that's what it's got the cabling on the back for to the actual outputs I've got no idea if it works if I'm even going to be able to use this thing I don't know but it looked like an interesting piece of gear the price was reasonable I think it was anyway once you've got shipping and stuff involved at least for me you know reasonable for me because trying to get test gear to do repair videos about is actually quite tricky these days because the prices are ridiculous way more than they're worth this was you know on the top end of that but it's it looked like it's something I could do a video about and it may or may not even work. I really don't know. It looks to be intact at least. I said to the guy, 
I want something physically intact and I, I don't care if it doesn't work because I had a few of these ones and I said make sure it's got the card in the back make sure it's physically intact you know that's what I specified to him I don't think I necessarily said you know I don't care if it doesn't work but <laughs> that is my criteria physically intact in reasonable condition right and you're going to get some scratches and stuff like that and old gear like this and obviously they have the cow labels up here they've been scraped off so I'll be doing a video on this thing in the future and uh, looking at if it even works if it works, then I don't have to do much, maybe. Maybe it just needs to recap, just a bit of a refresh and a bit of maintenance work. If it doesn't work, then we've got an exciting video to do. We always like repair videos, don't we? Check out the links down below for the videos I do. Subscribe over here if you're not really subscribed. Oh. Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel and help me to buy pieces of gear like this to do videos about to keep you guys entertained. Running a YouTube channel is expensive, at least it is for me. Catch you later.